Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Savage States of America. Thank you very much. Please be seated, everyone. I am putting forth a bill today to the Savage Nation to change the placard on the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, which currently says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. I'd like to change it so that we are no longer living in the dark ages. We're living in the modern age. And the new Colossus by Michael Savage will read as follows. And this is, of course, dedicated to Charles Schumer. Charlie, give me your terrorists, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. I love the Democrats keep saying, oh, we've got to modernize things. We can't live in the past. Why are we living in the past with an immigration policy that was based upon a nation that had no welfare? Oh, it was nice to see the inscription on the Statue of Liberty, which said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Really? But they really weren't coming here to live on welfare as they are today, because there was no welfare at the time that this placard was put put upon the Statue of Liberty. You see, it was not a welfare state. And the masses that were being brought in from Europe at the time were coming here to work in the factories of New York City, in the mines of Pennsylvania, in the steel mills of Ohio, the Poles, the Germans, the Jews, the Italians, The bricklayers, not one of them was on welfare. So when you hear these idiotic, phony liberals, these sanctimonious liberals say to you, gee, the Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. You need to remind them there was no welfare state then. And the masses that were being brought in were being brought in to work, not to live on their, on uh, on our hard work. Moreover, none of them were terrorists because they wouldn't have gotten through Ellis Island. But today, because of Charles Schumer and his cohorts, the brazenness of the radical left is beyond comprehension. They have the nerve to attack Trump for saying he wants to crack down on the illegal aliens, especially Muslims coming from the hellholes of the world who were brought in by the thousands, if not more, under Hussein Obama. Never forget who did this. Never forget who did this. It was under the eight-year reign of Hussein Obama that America has been Muslimized. Now you say, well, what's wrong with that? I don't know. Why don't you look at Iraq? Why don't you look at Syria? Why don't you look at Iran and tell me if there's something wrong with that picture? Because what is going on in Iraq, Syria, and Iran will be going on in this country unless the doors are slammed shut. And moreover, deportations are begun immediately. And when I say deportations, I am very serious. It is time to review all those who came in over the last 10 years. Every last one of them needs to be reviewed. How is it that so many thousands could come in from one rotten city in Uzbekistan? How is that, how is that possible? How could so many come from a hellhole in Uzbekistan? Give me your terrorists, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. But of course, this is not the only problem in America today. We have other problems. The dead are already buried. In New York City, everyone's forgotten that they went out partying that night for Halloween. And Schumer came out of the gate attacking Trump for wanting to crack down. Hillary came out attacking Trump for wanting to crack down. They were all on the same rotten, stinking, lying left-wing page that we need more immigrants. We're all children of immigrants. Well, Charlie, let me remind you of something. My grandfather, who emigrated to America, was not a terrorist. Neither was your grandfather. In fact, if he was in that direction, if he had any inklings in that direction, Charlie, he never would have gotten through Ellis Island. You know that. Charlie, the only reason you want all these people here is because they don't know English. They're compliant. They're easily manipulated. They're malleable. And they will let you and your cohorts steal the treasury blind 
without even knowing what you're doing as long as you give them free welfare, free housing, free medication, free education, Charlie. You know what that is called. That's called treason. Which leads me to a few questions on the program today. One is we're hearing that the terrorist who killed all those people in New York should be given his constitutional rights. In fact, one of the uh, people on Fox News who I previously respected, I don't know his name, he's a, where is this guy, whatever, uh, Andrew Napolitano said today, he said, it's not a question of whether I like it, it's a question of whether it's required by the Constitution. They read him as Miranda rights? They gave him first-class medical treatment in Bellevue Hospital? Not me. If I were in charge, that wouldn't happen. Anyone who commits a crime like this is left in the street. And he's questioned while injured in the street. And then he's hung from a lamppost for all the world to see. And then the next wave of terrorists who have such a big mouth in the hospital, wanting to lift up an ISIS flag, wants halal meals, spits in the face of the doctor who's treating him, they'll find out this nation is not filled with patsies anymore. I say constitutional rights should be suspended for terrorists. I realize that will shock all of the millennials who prefer communism and socialism to the system that they enjoy today. That's one of the questions. Another one is, should Schumer be tried for treason for bringing in terrorists under his diversity lottery scheme? Oh, I know, I know, that will never happen. They control the Congress, and none of the Republicans would ever go along with that. But it's a kind of nice, quaint question to raise, don't you think? Should Schumer be tried for treason for bringing in terrorists under his diversity lottery scheme? After all, it was he who brought them in, and he boasts about the fact that he brought them in. Here he is, the unashamed, brazen Charles Schumer, as brazen as ever after murder in the streets, after mass murder in New York City, justifying what he just did in clip 01. Listen carefully to brazenness and uh, coupled with insanity. This diversity program was a small program and it was intended to allow some from other countries to come. Boom! And in fact, my city of New York has dramatically benefited from this program. Oh, and sure, diverse ask the countries dead. such as Ireland, Poland, Ireland. Nigeria. Would you let three Irish in? Large Two Poles? numbers of immigrants be able to you come. You lying sell piece of garbage! Really you help the diversity of New York and the diversity. We don't need diversity. We need safety. You lying so this pig! Is an you excellent program, and nobody has said it's done a bad job. It's small. There are only about fifty thousand visas a year. Okay, I've had enough. Really of him. Him. I've had a number. That this man, this man, is the one who was justifying murder after it occurred. Instead of getting up like a human being who has any dignity and any honesty in him would say, you know what, my diversity program just resulted in the death of so many people and I feel ashamed and we have to revisit it. We're going to work with President Trump to eliminate the program. We're ashamed that we did such a thing. Instead, this brazen, lying Harvard graduate has the nerve to double down on his big mistake. Listen to what he says in number two. Now, as a member of the House, I helped create this program. It had a very simple purpose. Our immigration laws were based on family reunification and certain other qualifications. So there were whole ranges of countries for which people could not get visas. They tended to be European and African. That's not Even good, huh, Charlie? Even though the vast majority of Americans were descendants of Europeans and Africans, but because for several generations no people had come from those countries, the people who wanted to come were either third cousins or unrelated to people here. And the family unification, a very noble purpose, took predominance. Do you hear what this man is actually saying? That he knowingly wanted to change the demographics of America from European and African to something else. Third world garbage is what he wanted to bring into the country. I, I don't understand how you people can take any more of this. I don't know how we can take any more of this political class of thieves and gangsters. This is gangsterism and insanity. Now, if he was saying this in, in a vacuum, if he was saying all of this and murders had not occurred from some garbage can country, you say, all right, it's more rhetoric from the left. They just want cheap votes. That's all. This is the day after deaths. The second largest terror attack the largest terror attack, according to the police, since 9-11.
And this lying, lying man, this brazen, lying, blind, deaf, and dumb man, Schumer, has the nerve to get up and salute a program that just resulted in the second largest terror attack in New York's history. Instead of apologizing to the families of the dead, he gets up and says it's a wonderful program. Listen to what he says in number three. This brazen New York liberal politician of the lowest order. You know, I believe every immigrant is special. Every immigrant wait, wait, is stop, special stop, because... Stop, 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 stop. Every immigrant is special? But the deplorables are, are, are not special. They're disgusting. The white man is disgusting to you, you pig, you. But every... Oh, I could say things right now, but I can't even... I can't even go where I want to say things. You know, I, I almost burned myself up yesterday on this show. And I said to myself, I don't need to do this. There is no reason in the world for me to get as emotional as I do. And I swore to myself I wouldn't get emotional today. But when I listen to this whiny, nasal voice from New York, who has the nerve before the bodies are even cold to get up and double down on his failed immigration policies without even second thinking for one second, not pausing in flooding America with third world garbage. I'm telling you we're past the point of reason, we're past the point of faith, we're past the point of God. Something has to be done to stop this gang that is doing this to us. Now, if you think it's all on the Democrat side, you are mistaken. Today we wake up for another shock. We wake up and we find out that the Republicans want to screw the middle class with their tax plan. The Republican tax plan caps mortgage and property tax deductions. Who is going to be hardest hit? Home builders, homeowners, doctors, dentists, lawyers. They'll get nothing out of this tax plan. Have you actually stopped to think about why the Republicans are attacking the very demographic that elected them to Congress? Why are the Republicans committing suicide in front of our eyes? Why are the Democrats having America commit suicide right in front of our eyes? The political class is absolutely irrelevant, redundant, and dangerous for all living things. So where does that leave we the people? Where do we turn when we have such a corrupt, idiotic group of individuals running virtually everything, and it doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on? The Democrats, of course, want higher taxes for the most productive citizens. And they want as many third world ignoramuses as they can get their hands on so they can continue to rob the treasury blind because most of the people from the third world who come here do not even speak English. They don't even know what's going on. All they know is to vote D and sit on the behinds and collect welfare. And then they can scream racist and go to the ACLU and sue somebody who looks at them the wrong way. The Republicans, on the other hand, instead of representing the other side of the aisle, represent nobody. I have no idea who they represent. Why would the Republicans terminate mortgage interest deductions which is destroying home builders across America if this goes through. Why would they want to cut the mortgage interest deduction in half? Why would they cap the mortgage interest, interest deduction to $500,000 for newly purchased homes? Who exactly are they trying to punish? My friends, there's very little to hold on to in America right now. We had a revolution at the ballot box. We thought that our message of borders, language, and culture would take root, at least to some extent. And yet we wake up and it's gotten worse, not better. And I don't blame Trump. I blame the Republicans and I blame the Democrats. But most importantly, I blame you. Those of you who have your hats on backwards and go out and root, root, root for your home team. Because let me tell you something, my home team is, my home team is America. This is the Savage Nation, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Want me to get really dark with you? I can do that, but I don't know that I want to bum out my whole audience today. 
Yesterday I spent an entire show definitively proving to you that liberals are fellow travelers with terrorists. Now you can laugh at it if you want, but it will not change the fact that there was the liberal psychotics in the New York Civil Liberties Union who sued the NYPD to eliminate a surveillance program of mosques and Muslims that kept New York safe for many years. I don't know what it's going to take. Here are people run over while bicycling, and no one seems to care. Then I wake up today, and I see that 50% of millennials would rather live in socialist, communist countries without even knowing what it actually entails. This is a product of the brainwashing and the drugging of our children. This is an entire generation that has been drugged and brainwashed. You think I'm making an extremely bold statement? You're wrong. Most of these children are brainwashed and drugged. Millennials who will now who will soon control this country. 22% of them have a favorable view of Karl Marx. A surprising number of these drug addicts see Joseph a Stalin and Kim Jong-un as heroes. This is what has happened as a result of the drugging and the brainwashing of an entire generation. Is it any wonder that Schumer can get away with his lies and tell us that every immigrant is special and tell us that his program of diversity visas, which resulted in the second largest terror attack in New York history, is a good program without being forced to resign the next second? Let me take one quick call because I can go on and on on this and I think you think you've heard it all but you really haven't heard it all. You've only heard the tip of the iceberg, which is what you read about in my books, one bestseller after another. But underneath it, there's a very large iceberg of a man who is an immigrant son who knows the difference between an immigrant and a deadbeat, who knows the difference between an immigrant who comes here to work and one who comes here to kill, the difference between a nation that was not a welfare state that needed millions of poor in order to fill the fields and factories and a nation that no longer needs such immigrants except to fill the coffers of Boss Tweed, which is the government of the Democrat Party. How do you think an octogenarian like Dianne Feinstein maintains her grip of power? Or Nancy Pelosi, as cuckoo clock as she is? The answer is simple. Third worlders who don't even speak English. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Cry she with silent lips. Give me your terrorists, your poor and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. That is the mantra of the Democrat Party. And I can blow a fuse today, but I don't want to. I know what Obama did to this country. We know that his middle name is Hussein. I don't know why you don't understand what he was doing. The man flooded America with people of his own faith. You would say that's pretty normal. That's what people tend to do. And he cut off Christian immigrants, and he chose Muslim immigrants. That's what he did. Because he said the sound of the muzin in the morning is a beautiful thing, which he heard as a boy in Indonesia as he went to an Arabic language Muslim school for boys in Indonesia. And you wonder why people were saying he's a Muslim. Well, he's a Muslim. Now, not all Muslims are terrorists. That is true. The King of Jordan is a Muslim, and he is an ally of ours in the war against terror. But I ask myself, was Obama really an ally of ours in the war against terror? Or was he secretly playing for the other side? Well, I don't know about Obama, but I do know about Schumer. Here is a man whose diversity visa program resulted in the second worst terrorist attack in New York history. And instead of apologizing or keeping his big fat New York mouth shut, he goes on C-SPAN, the home of the Democrat Party, and he boasts about the diversity visa program last night or this morning. Is this the American way or is this the, the way of suicide? Well, I have to turn now to faith and freedom. I have to turn now to faith and freedom because it's my last safe place. Faith and freedom, not faith and reason. I had a caller in the Savage Nation recently who compared me to an Old Testament prophet warning people about the dangers of liberalism. 
And I remember I did it after I had uh, seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge about Desmond Doss, who drew courage from the Bible and eventually earned the Congressional Medal of Honor without firing a shot. But the caller's point was that everything I had done up to my book, Scorched Earth, was like an Old Testament prophet. While with Trump's war, I played the role of John the Baptist, who said, he must become greater while I decrease. And he was referring to the many times I'd had Donald Trump on my show, introducing the man who would bring my message of borders, language, and culture to an even wider audience than I already had. It was a very interesting insight. And as I say to you in the introduction to God, Faith, and Reason, God does not do the heavy lifting for us. It is up to us to find our connection to God and to do His will here. And I truly believe that my lifelong fight for our borders, language, and culture is part of my mission on earth. As I have said many times, it's indisputable that I, hel that I helped get Trump elected. Everybody knows that. It's equally indisputable that as imperfect as Trump is, he represented the only chance to restore a free, just, and godly nation given the crossroads we were at last November. But I'm asking you, my audience, what is my role now that Trump has been elected? That same caller suggested that winning the election was akin to the ancient Israelites being freed from bondage in Egypt. That's not a bad analogy. But let's not forget that even the Israelites didn't go directly from Egypt to the Promised Land. Not only did the Israelites have to wander for 40 years in the desert before reaching Canaan, they had to conquer the Promised Land before taking possession of it. Conquer the Promised Land before taking possession of it. Maybe that was left out in Hebrew school. They had to fight for the Promised Land. It wasn't given to them. You see, that 40 years of wandering wasn't just bad luck. In Exodus, God makes the Israelites wander in the desert because of their infidelity to him and their decisions to do evil in his sight. What a great metaphor for where we are today. Yes, we won a crucial election that may have saved our country from irreparable ruin, but Trump, ha Trump has not been perfect. He's already taken many wrong turns, as when he allowed the neocons to manipulate him into bombing Syria based on hearsay evidence of Assad gassing his own people. But like Moses, who also disobeyed God's will while leading the Israelites to Canaan, he is still leading America towards its own promised land. He's made mistakes along the way and will likely make many more in the future, but at least he's taking us in the right direction. And let's not forget that we've had great victories along the way as well, just as the Israelites did at Ai and Jericho. Trump has succeeded in stemming the tide of unvetted refugees from nations with high numbers of Islamic terrorists. He had to take that one all the way to the Supreme Court, and he's been able to get rid of the most onerous regulations Obama put on businesses, particularly in the fossil fuel industries. Those are good things. I remain cautiously optimistic that he won't let the sellouts in his party go too far in repealing environmental regulations under the pretense of reversing Obama's, which are far too restrictive. But here's the most important thing. Trump has legalized patriotism again. Though he has personally had to endure withering attacks from the media, thought police, he has exposed them for the frauds they are to large portions of the population who never suspected just how much fake news they were being subjected to. As for me, Michael Savage, I'm always asking myself, what's ahead and where should I go? To be honest, I don't have an answer to that right now. I feel that I've done my job. Some mornings I wake up and feel like a salmon that has swum upstream. I feel I have done the biggest thing I could possibly do in my life, and there's nothing left for me to do. But then I remember Moses, who spent the rest of his life trying to get his people to the promised land after he had freed them from bondage in Egypt. And I know there is still a lot of work to be done to save our nation. I'm going to pause right there. I've just read you two pages from my book to be published next week, God, Faith, and uh, Reason. It's that simple. That's one, two pages of it. That's all there is to it. There's a lot more in there that I'll get to as time goes on. I'm still being given a blackout by all people in the media. Can anyone explain to me what it is I've just said that intimidates the powers that be at the networks like ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC? What is it that they would have a terrorist on, a pervert, a child molester, a, a terrorist from Syria by remote hookup, a witch, a Wiccan, a communist, a socialist, a man who just murdered 30 people. Why is it they would have them on 
Am I more terrible than them? Why is it that Megyn Kelly is afraid of me, but she's not afraid of having someone from ISIS on her show? Why is it that the fine individuals on the nightly news will never talk about a man who's had one best-selling book after another and who has the number one rated radio show in the most competitive market in America on WABC in New York City? That's right. You heard me. The ratings came out again. I have the number one talk radio show in New York City for years running on the biggest station in the city, WABC, that is in talk. And yet, after one bestseller after another, top-rated show, I'm still persona non grata in my own country. Can anyone explain that to me? Would it change my life if suddenly the gods of the media came down and said, let's have this guy on, let's hear what he has to say? Wouldn't change anything in my life. Let's say I sold another 100,000 books. What's that going to do for my lifestyle? Nothing. What is it going to do for my pride? Nothing. What is it going to do for my ego? Nothing. What it would do is diminish the credo of the liberal. That is all it is about. There are lesser lights in the conservative world who are seen regularly on television because they are not a threat to the status quo. They are the status quo. It's that simple. Now, I could go on and on and on, and I don't think I will. This is Thursday of a very hard week. We see a man like Schumer who was responsible, directly responsible, in my estimation, for bringing in that third world garbage that just committed this atrocity in New York. And instead of apologizing to the dead and the injured, the amputees, the families of the grieving, he gets up there like the loudmouth New Yorker that he is that makes most people in America despise New Yorkers. And he politicizes the New York City attack and divides America even further by doubling down on his failed diversity program. Never saying he was wrong. He thinks that the best defense is a good offense. He learned that in the gutters of Brooklyn. Well, let me tell you something, Charlie. There comes a time in every man's life when people can see right through you. And right now, you are as hollow as a Halloween ghost. I think I should take an early break, but I don't want to. I actually don't want to. I'm not ready. House tax bill, Republican tax plan, 50% of millennials would rather live in socialist, communist countries, NBC slam for story about backlash against Muslim Americans after NYC terrorist attack. Less than 24 hours after the terrorist attack that killed at least eight in New York City, so-called NBC News is coming under fire for an online story about Muslim Americans bracing for possible backlash since the suspect is Muslim. Can you believe what this network has become? What this peacock has become? Of course you can believe it. If they'd hire a loser like Phil Griffin to run MSNBC into the ground of ideas simply for ratings for the deviants that are on that channel, if they would keep people on who continuously undermine America, undermine American values, undermine man, undermine woman, undermine church, undermine God, undermine country, what do you expect from the mother, from the mother load called NBC News? Headline, NBC News. Muslim Americans brace for backlash after New York attack. What do you mean brace for backlash? What, what are you talking about? There are people in America dead because of a Muslim who just killed them. I feel I'm more worried about what he, the response from the political leadership would be, said Umar Ahmed, a 43-year-old Muslim American physician from New Jersey to NBC. My biggest concern is that he's readily identified as a Muslim, and then that is extrapolated out to my own faith. Now, does that make sense to you? What do you mean, my own faith? He's of your faith. He's just interpreting it literally. What do you mean? Uh, but it's not another faith. Unless we, the infidel, don't really understand Islam, maybe that's the, re the, the real problem here. You mean there's two, two types of, of Islam I don't know about? What do you mean, my faith and his faith? The man said he did it in the name of ISIS. And the last I checked, the acronym ISIS stands for the Islamic State. It's not Jisis. It's not the Jewish state. It's not Bisis, the Buddhist state. It's not Crisis, the Christian state. It's not Hisis, the Hindu state. He did it in the name of the Islamic state. So what two religions are you talking about, doctor? I can't follow you. And where do they get these ideas from, doc? Do they get it from the Christian Bible? Do they get it from the Jewish Bible? Do they get it from the Hindu writings? Do they get it from the Buddhist teachings? They get it from their holy book, doctor. 
The only difference between the terrorist and you is that you don't interpret your holy book literally. They live in a fantasy world of the 7th century where they believe the caliphate was a paradise for those under the thumb of the pigs who ran the 7th century. The pigs have put women in costumes to keep them as slaves. The pigs who killed Jews and Christians and fellow Muslims alike if they didn't cow bow down to the mafiosos who wore dirty robes and called themselves holy. It was no paradise in the 7th century, Doc. It was no paradise at all. And yet many people in America right now live in that fantasy that if Sharia law was introduced here, we would live in the paradise that was never in the 7th century. Take a look at the women walking around in this country wearing medieval costumes where they're enslaved by heavy clothing even in, on summer days. Is that your idea of freedom or is that your idea of enslaving a woman? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. back to the savage nation look the only thing you can do in a time like this is pray and get a good night's sleep and i'm serious about that and i do have a great advertiser in casper mattresses it is a great mattress which i sleep on every night it's uh, the one that helps me sleep at night altogether and i'm promising you once you try casper you're going to love yours as much as i do love mine I actually sleep on one and switching to a casper is a no-brainer it's a higher quality mattress at a more affordable price you'll sleep cool and comfortable thanks to casper's Two high-tech foams. Why don't you get rid of that old stinking mattress you have? Casper ships right to your door for free in a small, a little box where you'll say, how did they get that in a box? And they'll pick it up if you don't love it and refund you everything from its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it. For 100 nights, it's no one that Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. Sleeping on a mattress at home is the best way to try it. So put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights. Risk-free. Go to Casper.com. Code SAVAGE. And you will get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. That's Casper.com. Code SAVAGE. Get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com. Terms and conditions apply. Let's go to the callers. Vincent on my number one rated program on WABC in New York City. Line 8, Vincent. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Dr. Savage, in my opinion, they fear you. You have the greatest asset on your side. You have God. And they don't want to comp compete with that. And let me tell you, I, I've listened to you for a while, and I know you have, you have a lot of knowledge, and they, don't, they can't match you. I'm sorry. I think they're fearful of your answers that they can't compete. Well, I mean, people have told me the thing is they're afraid to have me on because if they challenge me, I could defeat them with my arguments. And they really don't want to be defeated. But the thing is they have the power of, they have the, power of, of, of the edit. They record these shows, and... Uh, what they usually do is uh, edit out anything that makes them look like the dolts that they are. So I don't know that that's the entire reason. I think there's a secret blacklist in the media, and I happen to be on it. Vincent, I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. Stay on the line. KSFO, Rick, line six, fire away, a minute left. All right. Uh, second time, first time I called you Dr. Savage, put that on my bucket list. Uh, this one is about the uh, evil forces. You know, we do not battle flesh and blood, but spirits and evil forces up, uh, on the earth. And I think that's what the, they are afraid of, because they are so possessed, and they are Satan's minions, that they manifest at the at the your name. It's amazing. I I, I just I, it puts me away. <laughs> that, you mean you, you let, let's take the average pancake makeup woman or, or man in the media, and they hear my name, Michael Savage, and what? Something goes off in them, electro they get like crazy, they just hear my name. Why is it they, they would have Charles Manson on from a prison cell, a mass murderer, and they won't have Michael Savage on? Tell me. My audience is very large. It's bigger than Charles Manson's. I, I have millions of listeners who would tune in and blow their ratings through the roof. What is it that they're so afraid of on these networks? Well, the, the question you ask about why would they have Manson on but not you is because of familiar spirits. They... They have let in. There's so much evil in their lives. They've let in familiar spirits, and they manifest at. at wow. 
Well, look, let's be clear. I'm not a pure man. I'm as fallen a man as you will find. I struggle with my impurities every day, Rick. So let's not pretend I'm an evangelical uh, angel because I am not. I'm just one man seeking to find the answer. And that is why I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is Rock and Roll Friday on the Savage Nation. What part of the cultural meltdown affects you the most? Obviously, today it would be Charles Schumer's immigration diversity program, which resulted in the second largest terrorist attack in New York history, and his brazen, brazen cover-up of this crime. But what else, what else, what else, what else, what part of the cultural meltdown affects you the most? Is it the open pornography? Is it the legalization of marijuana? Is it the profanity on the airwaves and in movies? Is it the violence displayed by Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, and Matzenberg? Is it the constant litany of attacks on the church and Christianity? I don't know if it's worth talking about anymore, what part of the cultural meltdown affects you the most, but maybe we can. Maybe we can't. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Contrary to what some of you may believe, I am not Superman. I am just every man. Although I would tell you, after yesterday's program, where I opened up with all barrels... I came out blazing. It was blazing saddles. I was so infuriated by what Schumer had done to this country. Today I was more infuriated by his covering up what he had done to this country. I was more infuriated by Hillary Clinton joining in the big lie. I was more infuriated by Andrew Cuomo covering up whatever his Cuomo name is. I can't follow it. I only remember Perry. The others I can't remember. They all blur to me. But the fact of the matter is, why don't they have any humility to get up and say, you know, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we brought in too many Muslims from uh, uh, Uzbekistan. Maybe we'll close that down. Maybe we'll join Trump in saving Americans instead of hating Americans. But no, they double down and say we'll bring in more of them. You know, it makes you scratch your head if you're an ordinary man. It makes you get angry if you're not an ordinary man. All I can say to you is here's a radio show. It's Friday. We'll all go on with our lives like nothing happened. And all we'll do is pray that uh, it doesn't hit us or our family. I guess that's all you can do, right? No, wrong. No, you can look around, for example, in your city, wherever you're living. I live in San Francisco. And look at the demographic change that has been brought, upon, uh, brought about by white men. Now, listen to what I'm saying to you. This is a very important point that I may have made once in my 23-year career. Let's hope it's not the last time I make it. When the Native Americans were invaded by the Europeans who mercilessly ran over their lands... Uh, listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that the uh, American Indian was a noble savage living in harmony with nature and had a wonderful life. It's not what was true. It's, I'm, I'm an expert in the area. They were killing each other, slaughtering each other. They were ripping each other's skin off when they caught each other. I mean, they did the most horrible things imaginable to each other. But nevertheless, it was their land. They had been here for thousands of years. The Europeans came and colonized it. And who sold the Indians out? Who sold them out the most? Who? It was their own Indian chiefs. It was the Indian chiefs who, for wampum, booze, and guns, sold their Indians out. That's who the Democrats are and most of the Republicans today. They are the Indian chiefs who are selling out the very demographic that they come from. How many times in the last six months have you heard a white person say, oh, those old white men did this? 
as though they, it just rolls off their lips like they're not repeating some kind of racism. The old white men from the mouth of an old white man, like there's something wrong with being an old white man. I'm an old white man, and I'm very proud of myself. And if you don't like me, you can drop dead. How's that? That's what I'd like to hear from more men, to stand up to this assault. I am sick and tired of my age, my race, my demographic being dumped upon by the garbage of the world and the criminals in the political class. And I didn't even want to go here today. But sometimes things come out of me that I can't bottle up anymore. When I look at CNN and I see Andy Blooper, or shall we call him Andy Stuper, when I see Wolfie Blitzkrieg, or I see Jake Woodpecker, or I see Don Lemonade, I ask myself, how much longer this, can this country survive with low-life propagandists like them? And the answer is, I don't know. So let's go to more rock and roll. Your choice. Phone number is 855-407-282. That's what I really want to do for the time that remains on my show. There you go. That's all. Where'd this country go? Where'd this country go? what Obama did to this nation. Little Uzbekistan. Little Uzbekistan in Patterson, New Jersey. Shall I talk to you about immigration and the politics of race, language, and culture? Shall I talk about when this actually began? Back in the early 90s under George Bush the first. Did you know that? Did you know that they intended to bring in large numbers of immigrants to alter the distribution of power within the United States? Shall I tell you that it was planned by the Republicans and the Democrats to shift the balance between various ethnic and racial groups in our society? Shall I tell you it was done specifically to redistribute power among the states or within each state? Shall I tell you that the American public was never, ever consulted upon nor asked to agree to this massive shift in demographics? Shall I tell you that nevertheless, because of Quislings, like Schumer, it is proceeding at a speed that is at as approaching the speed of light. Shall I tell you that this massive alteration of our political, ethnic, and cultural landscape is transforming the United States into a third world nation that you find bewildering, alienating, and foreign to you? That shall I tell you that your children will be foreigners in their own land if this is not stopped? Shall I tell you that the most fundamental nightmare is the large numbers, the hordes, arriving day by day, year by year, of large numbers of immigrants who do not share our language or our culture. And as their numbers grow, take a look at New York City, so does their political influence and power. And they use the Indian chiefs who brought them in like Schumer, like Hillary, and like the others, to derail any legislative movement, to reduce immigration to a more manageable quantity. Shall I tell you about the policies both political and cultural, that are being used to make you redundant in your own nation. I already have. I've done it for the last 23 years. I've done it in one blockbuster best-selling book after another. And now I change gears. I change gears to a book about faith called God, Faith, and Reason. And you have to expect me to talk about it a little bit over the next few weeks. And at, at the risk of your displeasure, Indulge me because I will talk about my book, God, Faith, and, and, and Reason, for one reason only. And you know what that reason is? There is not one booking that my publisher has been able to get for me on any network in the United States of America. You say, well, too bad for you. It's actually a statement that's very, very interesting. It's actually a badge of honor that not one network in this country would have me on, but they'd have Charles Manson on from a jailhouse rather than Michael Savage. I'm actually a distinguished American. I'm actually a very distinguished American. I'm at the top of my field in broadcasting and in writing. And yet they'd rather have Charles Manson on from a jail cell than me. That says more about them than it does about me. And I'm actually very proud of the fact that I'm on a blacklist. It makes me fight even harder. And so forgive me if I have to read from my own book, God, Faith, and Reason, because you're not going to see it anywhere but hear about it on this show. Maybe you'll see it on michaelsavage.com. Maybe you'll, I don't know where you're going to see it, nowhere else. It seems the rest of them are terrified of God, God, terrified of faith, reason to Michael Savage. I don't really know why. I figured by shifting gears to a more spiritual book, maybe, just maybe, they would wake up to the fact 
that the decades I've been preaching my political faith of borders, language, and culture to the millions of people on my nationally syndicated radio show, maybe once by looking into the religious faith of my listeners and my ideas about the Judeo-Christian foundation of the American culture is the reason they're afraid to have me on. But it's not an academic theological treatise that I give you. People are already saying that this book is something more akin to an ancient mystery text because I draw upon Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, and other spiritual sources as well as my own autobiography, my own autobiography and highlights from my radio program as I share my glimpses of God and the experiences I have had over the whole of my life before and after my groundbreaking radio career. In this book, I give you childhood stories. I give you my dinner with an atheist and a Buddhist. I give you my interview with a Jewish gangster. I give you my reflections on selected passages from ancient scriptures. These are just a few of the eclectic group of experiences and insights that I share in this unique book. I begin with my days as a boy growing up in New York City, the son of an immigrant, to my many years searching for healing plants in the South Seas, to my current incarnation as one of the most popular talk radio hosts in the world. But I've been haunted by glimpses of the divine and I've struggled to find their meaning. And all I do in God, faith, and reason is present you, the reader, with my perceptions and consideration of the daily presence of God in the world around us and how the search to find God is the finding itself. And let me stop on that point. The search to find God is the finding itself. I stumbled upon that conclusion as the book went to press. I was trying to explain it both to myself and how I would explain it to my audience, knowing only I would be able to do it. That I would never be interviewed by any of the media figures to explain myself in a back and forth dialogue. So I figured I better figure out how to explain it myself on my own radio show. After all, I did it on my own radio show, and that's how Trump's war became number one Think about this. I want you to think about this. Do you know of anyone else who's had a number one New York Times best-selling book without any appearances in the media? There may have been a few here and there. I'm sure there are. All my life I've known about people who've had big successes without any radio show, without any TV show. Well, I just had one, Trump's War. I was not on Fox News. I was not on ABC, CBS, NBC. I was on no channel, and yet the people found me. I don't know why. I don't know how. So I figured I better figure out how to explain this to them. And as the book was being printed, I was saying, well, you know, this is interesting. The search to find God is the finding itself. The reason that in my faith, God is invisible, I figured out, is because if we saw him, if we actually saw God, we would do what we do with an old movie. We'd go on to the next image we're looking for. And so God was so smart, he knew that man would dismiss him if he, could, if he could be seen. In other words, if God had manifested himself and we could see him on a daily basis, we'd grow tired of him like yesterday's newspaper. We'd dismiss God like a movie we saw. Yeah, yeah, I saw that movie. It was pretty good. What's coming up this Saturday, we'd say. But no, now, because we can't see him and we never have seen him, directly that is, we keep looking for him. And that's how we set it up. You know, as I talk to you right now, I'm sitting in a studio on a hill somewhere and I see the leaves moving in the wind. And if you don't think that I'm that spiritual, that I don't see God in that wind in those leaves, then you don't know me at all. I can hear God moaning in a cut down tree. I can hear God screaming when a tree is cut down. I can hear the animals screaming in a slaughterhouse. So don't think that this is all an act because if you do so, do so at your own risk. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. the clip three before we jump to three i want you to listen to the mind of the biggest liar in american history as he salutes every immigrant as being special while spitting upon 
the deplorables as utter racist garbage. Listen to clip three, and you'll hear the sound of a racist monster, in my opinion, named Charles Schumer. Listen to the psychosis of a Democrat who brought in the murderer, who ran people over, and instead of apologizing for his failed diversity program, he doubles down and says we need more of them. Listen to the lie in 03. You know, I believe every immigrant is special. Every immigrant is yeah. special because yeah. they, right. Right. or all of us who descend from them, come from a special group of people who had the guts and the gumption guts. to get off their butts and basically come to America. They said, what? I don't want to lead this disease-ridden, impoverished life. No, I want to bring that to, to America and, take a risk. and kill people. And so that's one of the reasons America is a special place. And the idea of bringing new seed to this country. New seed? People who are willing to risk everything is great. Did you hear what he just said? New seed to America. Do you know how racially insensitive that is? Do you understand? Do you understand what he just said to you? Bring new seed to America. So he's basically calling all of you old seed, whether you're black or white. He's saying your seed is no good. You're no longer a viable seed for America. I want you to understand how psychotic this man actually is if he believes that after a day of murder, after such a day of infamy, that he would get away with pushing open borders even further. Where is God when we need him? All I could think of is a thousand people with torches outside his house saying Schumer must go, Schumer must go, Schumer must go. I don't know what it's going to take to save this nation when he attacks the very citizens of this country as somehow damaged or old seed. There's more to the lie that he just gave that I have to go back to. Did you hear what he just said? Every immigrant is special? This is after one of them just conducted a mass murder attack? To get off their butts and basically come to America? My friends, listen to what I just said to you. That noble saying on the Statue of Liberty... Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, written by Emma Lazarus in the early 1900s. I'm sure my grandfather heard about that when he came here. But you know what? He came here to work, and he worked very hard, Charlie, until he died of a heart attack at age 47, so his son, my father, could have a better life. And my father worked until he died of a heart attack in his 50s, so his son, me, Michael Savage, could have a better life. And I worked day and night when I could have retired a long time ago as an, to be an inspiration not only to my own family, because I don't want to be seen as a quitter, but also to the millions of people who hang on this show as their last hope. But you know, Charlie, they don't come here to work anymore. Did you know that 95% of all taxes are paid by the highest tax bracket? And did you know that the largest number of immigrants who come here don't work at all, Charlie? You know that they don't come here to work, Charlie. They come here to live off the fat of the land, Charlie, and to vote Democrat so that demagogues like you can continue to lie to the American people. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. than others. Some nights are better than others. Some weekends are better than others. You know that, right? Not everything is the same. Especially when you're a natural man as I am. I'm not drugged. I take no medication. I know that's shocking. And I'm not, I'm not tempting the fates. I, I got to tell you, it's awesome. I've led, led a life that's not as clean as I would have liked. I mean, I've done the best I can, but being a fallen creature, I, I wrote books on health and nutrition. I've tried my best to follow my own preachings in terms of diet. For 25 years, I never ate meat. No meat at all. No red meat. But since I began in radio, I've eaten a lot of meat. I wouldn't say every day, but I need the energy. I became a different person. When I started in 1994, I mean, I needed the energy. So I started eating greasy, garbage Chinese food in a little place near the radio station. Thank God they're out of business. I can say the name Hunan. I mean, I love the grease. I grew up on a garbage food diet. I mean, if I fed you the diet I was fed as a child, you probably would have died at age nine. But knockwood, for some reason, that cardiotoxic diet didn't kill me. 
But I saw my father, God rest his soul, died young. My grandfather, I mean, they both smoked, okay. I'm pretty sure it was the stress, the cigarettes, God knows what. So I set out to uh, lead a purer, you know, life nutritionally. And I wrote books such as The Skeptical Nutritionist in 1993, I believe. Got my doctorate in nutrition from a great university. And I did practice what I preached. I wasn't a vegan. I wasn't a vegetarian because I burned too much energy for that. I need a hotter fuel than, than a, a pure vegan diet. And so I mixed the sea, you know, and the, and the, and the, and the poultry in, but I wouldn't touch red meat. But that all went out the window in 94. And here I am. I don't know if it mattered much. I mean, I, I eat uh, pretty, pretty good, but uh, I live on mega nutri nutrition. Massive doses of ascorbic acid, I would say, are probably the number one salvation for me. Massive doses of vitamin E, but it's, you know, when you see these studies that vitamin E doesn't work or it's toxic, it's all put out by the drug companies who want you to go off vitamins and go on drugs because vitamins cost pennies, drugs cost thousands. We all know that's a fact. They tried to debunk Linus Pauling after he was dead. Linus Pauling was a giant compared to the Lilliputians that are in medicine and science today to a large extent. And his, his studies were fantastic. When he wrote that book with Ewan Cameron, the Scottish surgeon, vitamin C and cancer, it revolutionized many lives. I helped someone who had cancer, uh, a veteran from World War II, was given up for dead by the local VA hospital. He had a tumor the size of a softball under his arm, and they sent him home to die. And I gave him that book, and I coached him for months, and he, he beat cancer. So I know that nutrients work if they're taken properly and in the right kind. A lot of people say, well, I tried vitamin C and it didn't work. No, you didn't. That's like saying uh, fine champagne is the same as jug wine. There's a big difference between jug wine and fine champagne. There's a big difference between a $700 bottle of Bordeaux and ordinary, you know, swill red. Well, it's the same in vitamins. You have to know the, the quality matters as much, and so does the dose. Just as medicines are dose-dependent, diseases are dose-dependent, most vitamins are not taken in sufficient quantities or in the right quality to have any effect whatsoever. Now, I'm not here to talk about nutrition, but I'm just telling you that there's a lot of truth out there if you search for it. And I found it in nutrition, and I found it in politics, and I found it in the spiritual world. And all I can say to you is just as there are differences in vitamins and in wine, there's a difference in politicians. When you have a gutter rat, the Brooklyn jackass, Charles Schumer, the day after the second lar largest terrorist attack in U.S. history, in New York, that is, getting up there and glowing about the diversity program that brought this piece of human trash in from Uzbekistan, I will tell you that there's a big difference between one politician and another. And I have a huge concern that nothing will change when you have liars like this Gotham Ghanif continuing to push the lie of immigration the day after such a terrorist attack. Yes, I call them a Gotham Ghanif. If you have a problem with that, give me a call at 855-407-282. I'll be very glad to discuss my language with you. Okay, WDRC, Michelle, thank God one woman's listening to the show today. Uh, Michelle, thanks for uh, calling. What's on your mind? Well, Michael, I think that uh, just as with Trump, you have your pulse on um, the problem, uh, the religious base uh, to the problem of modernity, and uh, that ultimately people need a, need a sense of faith and of God. However, I think by making the search uh, the goal, you've kind of uh, using a kind of mystic, uh, Jewish mysticism of some sort, because um, for Christians, if you say it's not the finding of God, but the search, then that's really what led to modernity anyway, to take God, an actual uh, God with a dogma and faith and institutions, and say, oh, no, 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 they don't matter anymore, we just each have our individual God. Now, maybe for a secular Jewish mystic... No, no, wait a minute, hold it. I didn't say... No, no, I didn't say we all have our own God. I never said that. You've just interpreted my saying of the search as the finding itself to mean what you said. That's not at all what I said. Maybe I'm... I, what I'm saying is that in a nation where there are so many atheists who don't even believe in God anymore because they've been so disappointed by the churches and the synagogues who have failed to lead them to God, I am saying that the search is the success itself. That's much different than saying we all have our own God. 
I didn't say the, the God doesn't that God doesn't exist. Do you you really do see that that is a kind of Hegelian metaphysically that metaphysically that does not hold up. That's a modern metaphysical idea to say. Well, well, okay, let, in order for me to understand more correctly what you're challenging me on, and I'm not going to get angry just because you're challenging me. I mean, I think what, on. You, well, hold on. I need to understand you a little more clearly. What is your faith, and what do you follow? Okay, I am a Roman Catholic. Now, so you, so you practice, you practice. Wait, wait, you practice your Roman Catholicism to the letter of the law. I assume is that correct? As much as I can. So you believe anyone who doesn't follow all the doxies of your church is also not practicing a true religion? I don't believe all religions are equal. I know that makes me a, a terrible, but that idea. Well, here we go again. I and now this is a very important conversation. Well, that's because well, that's, no, I had Jerry Falwell on this show when he was still alive, and I thought he was a great man. He was powerful during the Reagan years. Reagan used him to push this whole idea uh, of religion. I thought he did a great job. I had Jerry Falwell on this program, and I actually take that interview in my book God, Faith, and Reason. And I'll tell you, we came to the same hiatus that is Jerry Falwell and I, that you and I have just come to. He believed that only those who follow Jesus Christ are following the true path. And I said, are you then saying that all the billions of other people who don't follow that particular view are not going to go to heaven? And he said, yes. I guess you feel the same way. I'm saying that the idea that all religions are a path to God is a relatively modern idea, believe it or not. Well, wait a minute, but, it, but is it, hold it, I mean, you do, you, ma'am, there are 7 billion people on earth, not all of them are Catholics or Protestants. Or Jews, you I understand that, Michael, but what you, do you not? So are you then saying that all Hindus, all Buddhists, and all Muslims cannot, cannot find God and cannot be entered into the kingdom of heaven? If they follow the natural law to the best of their ability. If they follow no, no, you, you, well, you didn't answer my question. Are you saying that unless they follow Jesus Christ, they will not enter heaven? You just heard what I said, Michael. I said they, if they follow the natural law to the best of their ability. But I, I believe that your, your book and your idea is a very important thing, and religion must be touched on for modernity to, to, uh, to end. However, I don't. I understand personally for you that mystic, that Jewish mysticism comes across to me because I I was taught by several Jewish professors at, that were not religious Jews per se, and they had that same uh, that, that that I like about you. That's why I like to listen to you, you know. And that's what I'm saying. You know, some of my best look. I got to say this, and it's not in jest. Some of my best friends are Catholic, and we get along real real well. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to say this because I actually mean it. I love the Catholic religion. I am not a Catholic. I love the ritualism of Catholicism. But I also deeply respect Protestantism. But I also deeply respect Orthodox Judaism. But I also have met Buddhists that are astonishingly religious. And I've met Hindus that I, that I respect. I understand their religion very well. You can't say to me they're all fallen people who will never uh, uh, reach heaven because they don't practice your religion. I did say that those ideas that you're that that all of these religions is kind of an idea of syncretism, uh, synchronizing religions, and it hasn't necessarily been helpful to religion. That's all. Well, let me put it to you this way: years ago, when I was struggling with this question of the many religions on earth, and all of the wonderful people who try their best to be moral and ethical and decent people. Uh, and yet you get exclusivists in each religion who says, unless you, you follow my way, you're going to hell. You're not going to heaven. I said, wait a minute. This doesn't make sense to me. Michael. And so I came. I, let, let me just finish my idea. I think you're a great caller because you're giving me an opportunity to express my beliefs even more completely. I believe in the healing wheel. And I wrote about this, I think, 15 years ago. I see the multiple religions on earth and I see a wheel. The center of the wheel or the hub is where God is. And each spoke is a different religion that leads to God or supports God. I think my concept is frankly the inclusiveness that people talk about that they can't achieve. Okay, how do you do with radical Muslim, I mean with the radical Islam in that particular, would you say that the radical Islams who are actually living their religion as it is printed in the Quran? Uh, that we should uh, tolerate them as well? 
Absolutely not. They should be banned from America. Anyone who practices and wants Sharia law should be thrown out of America. But, because but, they are incompatible with the survival of the world. And they certainly do not believe in, in uh, inclusivity. They believe in murder. I, and they believe in conversion. And I believe that we should never let anyone in. They should be given a litmus test. And if they are a Muslim, they should be given a double litmus test. And if they're a Muslim, they should be asked on arrival, do you believe in Sharia law? If they do, they should be sent out like they have smallpox. But see, they tend to, they don't believe it's the search. They believe they found God. And well, I'm sorry for that, but I don't believe they found God. I believe they found the devil. Found God either. I believe they're worshiping the devil of death. I agree with you on that, but I will say that they they believe in their religion. Most of the Western world no longer believes in religion. It's a kind of uh, let's all, can't we all just get along type. Well, I didn't I didn't say can't we all get get along. In my book, God, Faith, and Reason, this one man's odyssey, what I'm trying to say is if I say the search is the finding itself, if I say the search is the finding itself, I am reaching out to the millions of people who have no connection whatsoever to their own religions, even though their mother or their grandmother may have practiced the religion, they have completely disengaged from it. I am reaching out to them to bring them back to God, not back to some touchy-feely Hollywood religion. Okay, I, I see that. I, that's in other words, what I'm saying, you've got to understand something. I am in a strange way trying to reach out to those who are unreachable or don't even want to be touched and trying to make them understand that every time I see a leaf move in the wind or every time I hear a newborn baby cry, I am seeing God. And maybe they, by hearing that from me, will see, yeah, I understand that. Maybe I should see what this guy has to say. Maybe I really do have a spiritual core that needs to be fed some water again. But I, Look, what, I, I could talk with you forever. You're a very thoughtful woman. I'm not trying to beat you in an argument, nor do I think you're trying to beat me in an argument. All I'm saying is thank you for calling, and I'm sending you a free copy of God, Faith, and Reason. And after November 14th, when millions of people, let's say hundreds of thousands of people, have read the book, they can call the show, we can have the very same discussion all over again. But I stand by what I said. There should be a litmus test for those coming into this country with regard to religion. You know, freedom of religion doesn't mean you have the freedom to kill us. And if you practice or believe in a religious doctrine dating back to the seventh century that says you can kill the infidel with impunity, then you should be turned away at the door because you are bringing in a death cult you are bringing in death to everyone around you, and you don't belong in this nation. And I stand by those words. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> Now, when I come back after this ad in the next hour, I'm going to talk about income tax because we're getting screwed by the Republicans. They're going to jam us with state income taxes, no deductions. And although they're going to drop rates here and there, I'm telling you, the Republicans are ruining us, destroying us. And I may have to flee California. I may leave this dying third world hellhole because I'm not going to pay for the bums that they're bringing in. The streets are broken. Crime is at an all-time high in San Francisco. I, I, well, anyway, the thing is, I'm talking about travel, and I will talk about traveling for business because, as you know, if you travel, it's a game of wins and losses. Popping open an overhead bin, you find it empty, that's a win. Sleeping through a wake-up call, that's a loss. Buying your business trip at Upside.com, that's a triple win. Number one is Upside has the absolute best available prices for flights, hotel, or rental cars. Win number two is that Upside will reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com every time you buy a business trip. And number three is the amazing six-star treatment you will get from Upside's customer service specialist. One recent Upside customer was called away for an emergency meeting and had to miss his wife's birthday. So what happened? A navigator sent her flowers to try and help ease the disappointment. 
That's good. And that's just one example of how upside navigators go above and beyond for business travelers. Imagine what they'll do for you. Upside navigators are instantly accessible 24-7 by voice, chat, email, or message on the Upside app, even reaching out to you with useful info to help you avoid a problem before it happens. And I'm going to start your Upside six-star treatment right now. Go to Upside.com, use my code SAVAGE, and you'll get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. Amazon.com, that's code SAVAGE for a minimum $100 gift card. So go to Upside.com for your next business trip. Upside.com, you deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. Well, I'm just about out of time. I have such great callers right now about Schumer and what must be done about the book, God, Faith, and Reason, being more spiritual than religious. People asking me questions, uh, uh, would people that you met in Fiji go to heaven? My answer to that is simple. Many of them were in heaven already. And I have a Sikh calling named Inder from Virginia who says you'll be given a second chance at life according to their religion. I like that very much. In fact, I never met a Sikh I didn't like, and I don't mean that in jest. Uh, if you can judge a religion by its cuisine, I would say that the Sikhs are very high on the list because I have the best place to go for Punjabi curry, and it's owned by my friends who are Sikhs. Uh, how do you figure that out? Uh, Roman Catholics have to be very high up on the list, too, because I love Italian food. Last night, for example, I had mussels marinara and aliotas on the wharf. My God, how did those mussels get so fat? How did- Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. If you want me to get really dark with you, I can do that, but I don't know that I want to bum out my whole audience today. Yesterday, I spent an entire show definitively proving to you that liberals are fellow travelers with terrorists. Now, you can laugh at it if you want, but it will not change the fact that it was the liberal psychotics in the New York Civil Liberties Union who sued the NYPD to eliminate a surveillance program of mosques and Muslims that kept New York safe for many years. I don't know what it's going to take. Here are people run over while bicycling, and no one seems to care. Then I wake up today, and I see that 50% of millennials would rather live in socialist, communist countries without even knowing what it actually entails. This is a product of the brainwashing and the drugging of our children. This is an entire generation that has been drugged and brainwashed. You think I'm making an extremely bold statement? You're wrong. Most of these children are brainwashed and drugged. Millennials who will now who will soon control this country. 22% of them have a favorable view of Karl Marx. A surprising number of these drug addicts see Joseph a- Stalin and Kim Jong-un as heroes. This is what has happened as a result of the drugging and the brainwashing of an entire generation. Is it any wonder that Schumer can get away with his lies and tell us that every immigrant is special and tell us that his program of diversity, visas, which resulted in the second largest terror attack in New York history, is a good program without being forced to resign the next second. I can go on and on on this, and I think you think you've heard it all, but you really haven't heard it all. You've only heard the tip of the iceberg, which is what you read about in my books, one bestseller after another. But underneath it, there's a very large iceberg of a man who is an immigrant son who knows the difference between an immigrant and a deadbeat, who knows the difference between an immigrant who comes here to work and one who comes here to kill, the difference between a nation that was not a welfare state that needed millions of poor in order to fill the fields and factories, and a nation that no longer needs such immigrants except to fill the coffers of Boss Tweed, which is the government of the Democrat Party. Now, if you think it's all on the Democrat side, you are mistaken. 
today we wake up for another shock. We wake up and we find out that the Republicans want to screw the middle class with their tax plan. The Republican tax plan caps mortgage and property tax deductions. Who is going to be hardest hit? Home builders, homeowners, doctors, dentists, lawyers. They'll get nothing out of this tax plan. Have you actually stopped to think about why the Republicans are attacking the very demographic that elected them to Congress? Why are the Republicans committing suicide in front of our eyes? Why are the Democrats having America commit suicide right in front of our eyes? The political class is absolutely irrelevant, redundant, and dangerous for all living things. So where does that leave we the people? Where do we turn when we have such a corrupt, idiotic group of individuals running virtually everything, and it doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on? The Democrats, of course, want higher taxes for the most productive citizens. And they want as many third world ignoramuses as they can get their hands on so they can continue to rob the treasury blind because most of the people from the third world who come here do not even speak English. So they don't even know what's going on. All they know is to vote D and sit on the behinds and collect welfare. And then they can scream racist and go to the ACLU and sue somebody who looks at them the wrong way. The Republicans, on the other hand, instead of representing the other side of the aisle, represent nobody. I have no idea who they represent. Why would the Republicans terminate mortgage interest deductions, which is destroying home builders across America if this goes through? Why would they want to cut the mortgage interest deduction in half? Why would they cap the mortgage interest, interest deduction to $500,000 for newly purchased homes? Who exactly are they trying to punish? My friends, there's very little to hold on to in America right now. We had a revolution at the ballot box. We thought that our message of borders, language, and culture would take root, at least to some extent. And yet we wake up and it's gotten worse, not better. And I don't blame Trump. I blame the Republicans and I blame the Democrats. But most importantly, I blame you. Those of you who have your hats on backwards and go out and root, root, root for your home team. Because let me tell you something, my home team is, my home team is America. Should Schumer be tried for treason? for bringing in terrorists under his diversity lottery scheme. Oh, I know, I know, that will never happen. They control the Congress, and none of the Republicans would ever go along with that. But it's a kind of nice, quaint question to raise, don't you think? Should Schumer be tried for treason for bringing in terrorists under his diversity lottery scheme? After all, it was he who brought them in, and he boasts about the fact that he brought them in. Here he is, the unashamed, brazen Charles Schumer, as brazen as ever after murder in the streets, after mass murder in New York City, justifying what he just did in clip 01. Listen carefully to brazenness and that coupled with insanity. This diversity program was a small program, and it was intended to allow some from other countries to come. Boom! And in fact, my city of New York has dramatically benefited from this program. Oh, and sure. diverse Ask countries the dead. such as Ireland, Poland, Ireland. Nigeria. Would you let three Irish in? Large Two numbers polls? of immigrants be able to you come. You lying sell roots, piece of garbage! Really you. Help the diversity of New York and the diversity. We don't need of diversity. America. We need safety. You lying so this pig! Is an you. Excellent program, and nobody has said it's done a bad job. It's small. There are only about fifty thousand visas a year. Okay, I've had enough. Really of him. Call, I've really had a number. That this man, this man, is the one who was justifying murder after it occurred. Instead of getting up like a human being who has any dignity and any honesty in him would say, you know what, my diversity program just resulted in the death of so many people and I feel ashamed and we have to revisit it. We're going to work with President Trump to eliminate the program. We're ashamed that we did such a thing. Instead, this brazen, lying Harvard graduate has the nerve to double down on his big mistake. Listen to what he says in number two. Now, as a member of the House, I helped create this program. It had a very simple purpose. Our immigration laws were based on family reunification and certain other qualifications. So there were whole ranges of countries for which people could not get visas. They tended to be European and African, even though That's the vast not good, majority huh, of Americans were descendants of Europeans and Africans. But because for several generations no people had come from those countries, 
The people who wanted to come were either third cousins or unrelated to people here. And the family unification, a very noble purpose, took predominance. Do you hear what this man is actually saying? That he knowingly wanted to change the demographics of America from European and African to something else, third world garbage is what he wanted to bring into the country. I, I don't understand how you people can take any more of this. I don't know how we can take any more of this political class of thieves and gangsters. This is gangsterism and insanity. Now, if he was saying this in, in a vacuum, if he was saying all of this and murders had not occurred, on cheap votes, that's according to the police, since 9-11, and this lying, lying man, this brazen, lying, blind, deaf and dumb man Schumer has the nerve to get up and salute a program that just resulted in the second largest terror attack in New York's history. Instead of apologizing to the families of the dead, he gets up and says it's a wonderful program. Listen to what he says in number three. This brazen New York liberal politician of the lowest order. You know, I believe every immigrant is special. Every immigrant is wait, wait, special stop, stop because... Stop, stop, stop. Every immigrant is special? But the deplorables are, are, are not special? They're disgusting? The white man is disgusting to you, you pig you? But every... Oh, I could say things right now, but I can't even... I can't even go where I want to say things. You know, I, I almost burned myself up yesterday on this show. And I said to myself, I don't need to do this. There is no reason in the world for me to get as emotional as I do. And I swore to myself I wouldn't get emotional today. But when I listen to this whiny, nasal voice from New York, who has the nerve before the bodies are even cold to get up and double down on his failed immigration policies without even second thinking for one second, not pausing in flooding America with third world garbage. I'm telling you we're past the point of reason. We're past the point of faith. We're past the point of God. Something has to be done to stop this gang that is doing this to us. Years ago, I said diversity is perversity. That was my way to fight it. I used a phrase. I wasn't wrong. It's now a killing perversity. How is it that this piece of human trash, this subhuman in Bellevue Hospital, can be given religious meals, medical care, a Bible, a holy uh, book to pray to? And he tried to kill children on a school bus as well. How is it that they believe that killing children is justified by their religion? Babies crying. This isn't the first time in Brussels at the airport a few years ago, blood, faces blown off, babies crying. And then the Islamofascists said that all the people of Belgium are soldiers, which is why we attack them. There are no innocent civilians because they're all soldiers, because they're bombing our brethren in our homeland. Now, I won't ask you, the idiots out there who ascribe to liberalism, how a baby can be a soldier, because the mind of an Islamofascist and a liberal is not a rational mind. This is the kind of justification the Nazis used in their blitzkrieg invasion of Poland and the total conquest of Europe. I first coined the phrase Islamofascist many, many years ago. People have used other words such as jihadis and radical Muslims, but they're Islamofascists. They are the new Nazis, the Nazis of our time. But instead of wearing a swastika, instead of marching to a German band, instead of reading Mein Kampf, they are using different music and a different book. To discuss them further invites the kind of analysis that those subhumans don't deserve. I've had other days since those first days of Islamofascist attacks, when the terrorists from Tunisia slaughtered scores of innocents in Nice, France, on Bastille Day in 2016. I remember those two horrible days in June, two different events. Then there was a nightclub shooting in Orlando by Muslims, and then another bombing of an airport in Turkey. Then the assassination of police in Dallas, and other cities in July of uh, that year by black racists. The attacks are coming faster and faster, and the scenes of carnage on TV are getting worse. And each time I wake up and think, I've got to do my job today. I also think I wish to dear God that Obama was never elected. But that's all I can do. 
I'm just a man with a microphone, but I know history and I also know what is going to be done. I know what's going to be done. And I can guarantee you as I'm sitting here writing this that that change I am seeing is occurring. It's a shift from complacency in half of America. The other half write them off. The Schumers, the Tappers, the Blitzers, write them off. Their brains are so washed they can never be cleansed. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. I am putting forth a bill today to the Savage Nation to change the placard on the Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor, which currently says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. I'd like to change it so that we are no longer living in the dark ages. We're living in the modern age. And the new Colossus by Michael Savage will read as follows. And this is, of course, dedicated to Charles Schumer. Charlie, give me your terrorists, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. I love the Democrats keep saying, oh, we've got to modernize things. We can't live in the past. Why are we living in the past with an immigration policy that was based upon a nation that had no welfare? Oh, it was nice to see the inscription on the Statue of Liberty, which said, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Really? But they really weren't coming here to live on welfare as they are today, because there was no welfare at the time that this placard was put, up, put upon the Statue of Liberty. You see, it was not a welfare state. And the masses that were being brought in from Europe at the time were coming here to work in the factories of New York City, in the mines of Pennsylvania, in the steel mills of Ohio, the Poles, the Germans, the Jews, the Italians, the bricklayers, not one of them was on welfare. So when you hear these idiotic, phony liberals, these sanctimonious liberals say to you, gee, the Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. You need to remind them there was no welfare state then. And the masses that were being brought in were being brought in to work, not to live on, their, on, uh, on our hard work. Moreover, none of them were terrorists because they wouldn't have gotten through Ellis Island. But today, because of Charles Schumer and his cohorts, the brazenness of the radical left is beyond comprehension. They have the nerve to attack Trump for saying he wants to crack down on the illegal aliens, especially Muslims coming from the hell holes of the world who were brought in by the thousands, if not more, under Hussein Obama. Never forget who did this. Never forget who did this. It was under the eight-year reign of Hussein Obama that America has been Muslimized. Now you say, well, what's wrong with that? I don't know. Why don't you look at Iraq? Why don't you look at Syria? Why don't you look at Iran and tell me if there's something wrong with that picture? Because what is going on in Iraq, Syria, and Iran will be going on in this country unless the doors are slammed shut and moreover, deportations are begun immediately. And when I say deportations, I am very serious. It is time to review all those who came in over the last 10 years. Every last one of them needs to be reviewed. How is it that so many thousands could come in from one rotten city in Uzbekistan? How is that, how is that possible? How could so many come from a hellhole in Uzbekistan? Give me your terrorists, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. Cries she with silent lips, give me your terrorists, your poor, and your huddled masses yearning to live for free. That is the mantra of the Democrat Party. And I can blow a fuse today, but I don't want to. I know what Obama did for this country. We know that his middle name is Hussein. I don't know why you don't understand what he was doing. The man flooded America with people of his own faith. You would say that's pretty normal. That's what people tend to do. And he cut off Christian immigrants, and he chose Muslim immigrants. That's what he did. Savage. Death 
dead are already buried in New York City. Everyone's forgotten that they went out partying that night for Halloween. And Schumer came out of the gate attacking Trump for wanting to crack down. Hillary came out attacking Trump for wanting to crack down. They were all on the same rotten, stinking, lying left-wing page that we need more immigrants. We're all children of immigrants. Well, Charlie, let me remind you of something. My grandfather, who emigrated to America, was not a terrorist. Neither was your grandfather. In fact, if he was in that direction, if he had any inklings in that direction, Charlie, he never would have gotten through Ellis Island. You know that. Charlie, the only reason you want all these people here is because they don't know English. They're compliant. They're easily manipulated. They're malleable. And they will let you and your cohorts steal the treasury blind without even knowing what you're doing as long as you give them free welfare, free housing, free medication, free education, Charlie. You know what that is called. That's called treason. Which leads me to a few questions on the program today. One is we're hearing that the terrorist who killed all those people in New York should be given his constitutional rights. In fact, one of the uh, people on Fox News who I previously respected, I don't know his name, he's a, where is this guy, whatever, uh, Andrew Napolitano said today, he said, it's not a question of whether I like it, it's a question of whether it's required by the Constitution. They read him as Miranda rights? They gave him first-class medical treatment in Bellevue Hospital? Not me. If I were in charge, that wouldn't happen. Anyone who commits a crime like this is left in the street. And he's questioned while injured in the street. And then he's hung from a lamppost for all the world to see. And then the next wave of terrorists who have such a big mouth in the hospital, wanting to lift up an ISIS flag, wants halal meals, spits in the face of the doctor who's treating him, they'll find out this nation is not filled with patsies anymore. I say constitutional rights should be suspended for terrorists. I realize that will shock all of the millennials who prefer communism and socialism to the system that they enjoy today. I have to turn now to faith and freedom because it's my last safe place. Faith and freedom, not faith and reason. I had a caller in the Savage Nation recently who compared me to an Old Testament prophet warning people about the dangers of liberalism. And I remember I did it after I had uh, seen the movie Hacksaw Ridge about Desmond Doss, who drew courage from the Bible and eventually earned the Congressional Medal of Honor without firing a shot. But the caller's point was that everything I had done up to my book Scorched Earth was like an Old Testament prophet while with Trump's war, I played the role of John the Baptist who said, he must become greater while I decrease. And he was referring to the many times I'd had Donald Trump on my show, introducing the man who would bring my message of borders, language, and culture to an even wider audience than I already had. It was a very interesting insight. And as I say to you in the introduction to God, Faith, and Reason, God does not do the heavy lifting for us. It is up to us to find our connection to God and to do His will here. And I truly believe that my lifelong fight for our borders, language, and culture is part of my mission on earth. As I have said many times, it's indisputable that I helped get Trump elected. Everybody knows that. It's equally indisputable that as imperfect as Trump is, he represented the only chance to restore a free, just, and godly nation given the crossroads we were at last November. But I'm asking you, my audience, what is my role now that Trump has been elected? That same caller suggested that winning the election was akin to the ancient Israelites being freed from bondage in Egypt. That's not a bad analogy. But let's not forget that even the Israelites didn't go directly from Egypt to the promised land. Not only did the Israelites have to wander for 40 years in the desert before reaching Canaan, they had to conquer the promised land before taking possession of it. Conquer the promised land before taking possession of it. Maybe that was left out in Hebrew school. They had to fight for the promised land. It wasn't given to them. You see, that 40 years of wandering wasn't just bad luck. In Exodus, God makes the Israelites wander in the desert because of their infidelity to him and their decisions to do evil in his sight. What a great metaphor for where we are today. Yes, we won a crucial election that may have saved our country from irreparable ruin. 
But Trump ha- Trump has not been perfect. He's already taken many wrong turns, as when he allowed the neocons to manipulate him into bombing Syria, based on hearsay evidence of Assad gassing his own people. But like Moses, who also disobeyed God's will while leading the Israelites to Canaan, he is still leading America towards its own promised land. He's made mistakes along the way and will likely make many more in the future, but at least he's taking us in the right direction. And let's not forget that we've had great victories along the way as well, just as the Israelites did at Ai and Jericho. Trump has succeeded in stemming the tide of unvetted refugees from nations with high numbers of Islamic terrorists. He had to take that one all the way to the Supreme Court, and he's been able to get rid of the most onerous regulations Obama put on businesses, particularly in the fossil fuel industries. Those are good things. I remain cautiously optimistic that he won't let the sellouts in his party go too far in repealing environmental regulations under the pretense of reversing Obama's, which are far too restrictive. But here's the most important thing. Trump has legalized patriotism again. Though he has personally had to endure withering attacks from the media, thought police, he has exposed them for the frauds they are to large portions of the population who never suspected just how much fake news they were being subjected to. As for me, Michael Savage, I'm always asking myself, what's ahead and where should I go? To be honest, I don't have an answer to that right now. I feel that I've done my job. Some mornings I wake up and feel like a salmon that has swum upstream. I feel I have done the biggest thing I could possibly do in my life, and there's nothing left for me to do. But then I remember Moses, who spent the rest of his life trying to get his people to the promised land after he had freed them from bondage in Egypt. And I know there is still a lot of work to be done to save our nation. I've just read you two pages from my book to be published next week, God, Faith, and uh, Reason. It's that simple. So I can go down the list and I can find more of these things for you from the report. And it's about the Muslim threat to America. At the time, it was a great report. It was about the jihadist ideology that was uh, being picked up by the Salafi-based NGOs in extremist sermons, in Salafi literature, in jihadi videotapes, in extremist sponsored trips to radical madrasas, militant training camps abroad, where young susceptible Muslims, especially those living in the West, are found. And it was all in this report of how they were going about stopping the Muslims from becoming radicalized or going to the next step of killing, running people over. And as I speak with you, the subhuman who ran those people over, the subhuman, look at his face, the inbreed. Take a look at the inbreed's face. Look at him. He's in the hospital laughing about what he did, celebrating, enjoying an ethnic meal, praying to his Allah that he did a good deed. And you don't see the connection between the religion and the act? Are you people crazy? Are you that stupid to disconnect his religious beliefs from what he did? How many years can you keep apologizing for what is in the holy book that too many of these subhumans take literally? Ask any of the soldiers who lost legs or arms. Ask any of the soldiers who've come back from Iraq, Afghanistan, or Syria what these animals are really like. Don't ask the liberals in the media. Don't ask the propagandists who make the movies showing you as the American troop is the enemy. Ask the soldiers who were over there and dealt with these animals. Then you'll understand what we're going to deal with here. More and more and more. Until we get so tough that either they don't come here or we don't let them come in here and we start deporting those who are here, who are on the lists, who have been communicating with others who will do us harm. Throw them right out of the country. And if no one wants them, I have a solution to that problem as well. What we need to do is outlaw Salafism in the United States of America. Write it down. I just said it. See, freedom of religion is not a license to kill in the name of that religion. So you keep hearing the words. You don't know what they mean. This is talk radio. I realize it's not NPR with Vivaldi music. And I realize all of the very sophisticated people in America say things. Oh, I don't listen to AM radio. I only listen to NPR. Well, those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, let me give you a little lesson that you won't get from NPR or Wolf Flitzer, or Jake Tapper, or the other fellow travelers. I have said, and I'll say it again, there are a few sects of Islam 
such as that practiced by the piece of human trash who did this yesterday that must be illegal in the United, made illegal in the United States of America. Religious freedom is not a license to kill. And anyone who uses a religious sect to kill is not practicing a religion. They're practicing a death cult, and that death cult must be banished in America. Salafi. What is Salafi? You've heard about Salafi Islam. It's from the word Salaf, short for Salaf As-Sali, meaning righteous predecessors or pious ancestors. And Salafi is a generic term depicting a Sunni revivalist school of thought that uses the the so-called pious ancestors of the early period of early Islam as exemplary models. So Salafis want to purge Islam of all outside influences, starting, you're not going to believe this, with the cultures and traditions of contemporary Muslim societies and restore it to that of an imagined 7th century utopia, the so-called caliphate. Many of you don't know what the caliphate means. It is an imagined 7th century utopia, imagined is the operational word. So they get the lowest, lowest mentality, the inbreeds, amongst their people, people who look like inbreeds, people who look like belong in the back of Barnum and Bailey's freak show from centuries of inbreeding, and they brainwashed them into believing that in the seventh century there was a caliphate that was a utopia for Muslims. It never existed. And the Salafi interpretation of Islam seeks a, quote, pure society which applies the Quran literally and adheres to the social practices and Islamic law, so-called Sharia, which prevailed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century in Arabia. Anyone who practices that is not practicing a religion that is protected by the U.S. Constitution or the First Amendment. They are practicing a death cult. Now, what about a jihadi Salafi? Or what about a takfir? Or what about the other words you may have heard thrown around? They all have meaning, and they're powerful meanings to the most uneducated amongst the opposition that kill us. These are people who are generally illiterate, the murderers. The murderers generally come from the lowest classes of their society. They are uneducated. They're usually very low IQ, borderline feeble-minded. And they can easily be swayed into believing there was a thing called a 7th century caliphate where everything was perfect. And then they're told to kill to make the world like that 7th century caliphate all over again. Unfortunately, for those of you who like to bicycle, dance, smoke pot, go to the movies, watch pornography, sleep with someone of the same sex, you're not included in that 7th century view. You, they would like to kill you. Do you know that? What is it that this murderer in New York City said as he ran the people over and was aiming for the school bus with disabled children on it? Did you know he wanted to kill those poor little children on the school bus? This piece of human trash who's laughing in the hospital getting halal meals? Do you know that this piece of garbage is being treated in Bellevue Hospital with the same treatment that the President of the United States would be given? That's how sick our country is? And he's being given a religious meal because it would violate his religious rights to eat the same trash that everybody else eats in the hospital? He's laughing at us because he knows we're weak and stupid. He knows we're so weak and stupid that we would let a man like him into the country to begin with, not arrest him even though he had been interviewed in 2015 by the FBI. Did you hear? Oh, you didn't know that? Did you know the suspected New York City attack to Safulo Sapov was interviewed by the FBI in 2015, but the agents did not have enough evidence to open a case on him? Are you listening to this? Enough evidence. Enough evidence. Enough evidence. Thanks to the fellow travelers called lawyers, we will never, ever have enough evidence until they kill people. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. for story about backlash against Muslim Americans after NYC terrorist attack. Less than 24 hours after the terrorist attack that killed at least eight in New York City. Headline, NBC News. Muslim Americans brace for backlash after New York attack. 
What do you mean brace for backlash? What, what are you talking about? There are people in America dead because of a Muslim who just killed them. I feel I'm more worried about what he, the response from the political leadership would be, said Umar Ahmed, a 43-year-old Muslim-American physician from New Jersey, to NBC. My biggest concern is that he's readily identified as a Muslim, and then that is extrapolated out to my own faith. Now, does that make sense to you? What do you mean, my own faith? He's of your faith. He's just interpreting it literally. What do you mean? When it's not another faith. Unless we, the infidel, don't really understand Islam, maybe that's the, re the, the real problem here. You mean there's two, two types of, of Islam I don't know about? What do you mean my faith and his faith? The man said he did it in the name of ISIS. In the last I checked, the acronym ISIS stands for the Islamic State. It's not Jisus. It's not the Jewish state. It's not Bisis, the Buddhist state. It's not Crisis, the Christian state. It's not Hisis, the Hindu state. He did it in the name of the Islamic state. So what two religions are you talking about, doctor? I can't follow you. And where do they get these ideas from, doc? Do they get it from the Christian Bible? Do they get it from the Jewish Bible? Do they get it from the Hindu writings? Do they get it from the Buddhist teachings? They get it from their holy book, doctor. The only difference between the terrorist and you is that you don't interpret your holy book literally. They live in a fantasy world of the seventh century where they believe the caliphate was a paradise for those under the thumb of the pigs who ran the seventh century. The pigs have put women in costumes to keep them as slaves. The pigs who killed Jews and Christians and fellow Muslims alike if they didn't cow bow down to the mafiosos who wore dirty robes and called themselves holy. It was no paradise in the 7th century, Doc. It was no paradise at all. And yet many people in America right now live in that fantasy that if Sharia law was introduced here, we would live in the paradise that was never in the 7th century. Take a look at the women walking around in this country wearing medieval costumes where they're enslaved by heavy clothing even in, on summer days. Is that your idea of freedom? Or is that your idea of enslaving a woman?